for our entrance procession, we'll sing We Three Kings. If you have your missalette, it's number 37. If you have your St. Joseph Sunday Missal, it's number 38. Please stand. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar. Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. O star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceed. Guide us to thy perfect light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we celebrate this solemnity of the Epiphany, we come to the conclusion of our um, of our. Well, we're not at the conclusion of Christmas, but uh, we come to the conclusion of the solemn times of Christmas. We celebrate the fact that all people are called to come and worship our God, and how privileged, how blessed we are to know precisely where and how we can come to worship him. It's at this altar where we offer him the greatest sacrifice, which is God himself, Jesus' offering on the cross. And so, brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray. Shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Median and Epha, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace to the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The kings of Tarshish and the Isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings pay homage to him. All nations shall serve him. Shall adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other government or in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets of the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, Bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. 
after their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. I got to have my own epiphany journey last Sunday. So I went home to my parents, and as I kind of had said, my nephew Arlo, my brother's first kid, uh, was born last Sunday on the Feast of the Holy Family. So I get home, and I was just there to spend time with my family, and my mom says, well, uh, Aaron says that we can come to the hospital and we can see Arlo through the window. And she says, what do you guys think? Now, here's a pro tip. If, if your mom or any grandma ever says something like that, the answer is, we think that's a great idea, no, even if you don't think it's a great idea. And uh, so uh, somehow I was chosen to be the driver. I think it has something to do with, I always say I have a doctorate in driving. The reason is because I've been to driver's school twice in addition to, um, in addition to the, the driver's ed. It's because two days after I got my license when I was 16, I got a speeding ticket. Uh, and then later I got another speeding ticket. And then later I got another speeding ticket. And so to keep them off my record, I went to driver's school twice. So uh, my mom, my dad, my niece, uh, who's 21, and myself, we got into my car, and we made our own Magi journey. We even had to sacrifice. Um, we drove past, and you don't know my dad, so you don't know how big of a sacrifice this is, but we drove past to Casey's. We, like, we kept driving. And of course, you know, you look at it, and, and it's like, no, that's, that's not the star we're following. Those aren't the bright lights. And we get on the interstate and we drive to Bloomington, where my, I, my parents live just outside of Lexington. And um, we get there and on time because I was driving, maybe a little bit early actually, now that I think of it. We get out and we're at Broman Hospital, um, which is bought, my, my brother, uh, my oldest brother works there. Uh, it was bought out by Carl and so they call it Carl's Jr. now. But uh, anyway, they, we get there. And we get out, and the, you know the, the the parking lot is like recessed, and so even though they're on the first floor, it's a little bit a ways up. And we're standing there in the parking lot, and it was windy and cold, and we're waiting and waiting. And of course, it's like you know the, the, these this poor couple just had a baby, so we're not gonna like you know pretend like we're impatient, but it's like, we want to see this baby through the window. And of course, some of us, excluding my mom, want to see the baby and then get back in the car. Uh, my mom just wants to stand out there and see the baby through the window. And I can't blame her. I've never been a grandmother before. I probably never will. Um, but, right, so we, so finally we talked to my brother on the phone and there he is. And he, he holds Arlo up and we see him and it's an awesome sight, you know? Any new baby in your family, it's just really special. And it's especially when you know that they're born healthy. Uh, my sister-in-law, was, was, she was doing fine. Um, and so you know that, that everybody is safe. And, it, and it's, it's a great experience. And so that, for me, gave me a little bit of a deeper reflection, you know, for the Magi, this long journey that they went on, following this star, discerning, looking at the sky. And of course, they didn't know. They didn't know what they would encounter. They didn't know where they would find him. They thought, of course, he's going to be in Jerusalem. So they head to Jerusalem. And Herod is surprised. He doesn't know his scriptures as well as he should. So he's got to talk to the, the scripture scholars and say, okay, where, where is this baby going to be born? And so they go to Bethlehem and they find him. Now, when these magi encounter King Herod, they're respectful, and they're kind, they treat him like a king, but they don't worship him. But when these magi get to the child, they fall down and prostrate. 
and prostrate. In other words, uh, there's, there's moments where I, as a priest, fall down and prostrate. It's, it's at my ordination, and then every uh, Good Friday, the priest lays flat down on the, on the floor of the church. And it's a way of saying that whatever is in front of me is infinitely greater than myself. It's a way of worshiping. And this, of course, was fulfilling the prophecy that in Israel there would be born a king and Israel would become a light to the nations. And as we said in the responsorial psalm, every nation on earth will come to adore you. That God is worthy to be worshipped. The God of the Israelites is worthy to be worshipped, not just by the Israelites, but by every single person. Now, this seems obvious to us, but I think it's really important for us to understand what worship is. Because every person who's ever walked the face of the earth has had a desire to worship someone or something. We see it in the pagans with all of their different gods, the Aztecs sacrificing human sacrifices to, to the sun god to make sure that the sun rises again. The, the people who surrounded the Israelites having their gods of fertility and the crops and uh, the Romans and Greeks having all of their gods. But what does it mean to worship? Well, to worship someone or something means that, well, that's where we think it will provide for us, right? So the Aztecs, they worshiped to their sun god because they wanted the sun to come up the next day. We think it'll provide something for us. To worship also means to give something of ourselves, but also to recognize that whatever is in front of us is infinitely greater than us and is worthy of being acknowledged as such just, just by virtue of what it is. Right? It doesn't have to earn that, just by its very being. And so we today, we worship a lot of things. Worship also means we spend a lot of time or money or attention or thoughts on something. We, we give something of ourselves. So what do we worship today? Well, you know, we can go through the litany what do we spend our time, our money, our attention, our thoughts on? A lot of. Some people, it's TV shows. You know, uh, there used to be a day, you know, it's everything's streaming. There used to be a day when it's like this TV show comes on at this time. And so, you know, people line up on the couch and, and watch it. Or they think about what's going to happen next week. Other people, it's sports. For some people, it's, it is their children. It is their children or, or grandchildren uh, where it goes a little bit beyond just kind of loving and adoring and uh, maybe the, the kids rule the roost a little bit or, or maybe, um, you know, uh, sometimes if, if the parents are afraid to exert their God-given authority uh, in loving ways. For other people, it's their pets. Some people worship their pets. For some of us, it's other people. For many of us, it's other people's opinions of ourselves. You know, that we spend a lot of time and attention and detail trying to make sure that, that whatever we project into other people's minds is, is something that they're going to like. And so we worship other people's opinions of us. For some people, it's politicians or celebrities. We think that they're going to provide what only God can provide. We spend a lot of time and attention and a disordered amount worrying and trying to make sure, right, that, uh, that what we want to happen happens. There's a lot of different things that we can worship, and one person can uh, worship a lot of different things, a lot of idols. I mean, that's what the pagans did. But of course, we know that there's only one who is deserving of worship. And that's the one who holds us in being. That's God himself, who was so good and so loving and so generous to us that he made himself present to us as a child, and he makes himself present to us in the Eucharist. Jesus is just as present to us in the Eucharist as he was to the Magi. So then, how do we reorder our lives? Because the thing about right worship is it sets us free. Remember when Moses came to Pharaoh and he said, let us go out into the desert. Let my people go, and a lot of people think that stops right there. No, let my people go so that we may worship our God. Freedom and worship are always intrinsically related. 
And from the very beginning of scripture, we know that there's only two options, worship God or be a slave. There's only two options. So that's what the good news is about Jesus coming for all the nations, ready to set all nations free so that we can come and we can worship him. Meaning we can spend our time, our money, our attention, our thoughts on him. We can receive from him what only he can provide. We can acknowledge that he is infinitely greater than us. So how do we worship our Lord? Well, there's a million things we can say. There's a few small things that I think a lot of times we forget about, but we do. You know, when you genuflect, that's an act of prostration. Maybe you're not laying flat down on the, on the, on the floor. Please don't do that, uh, but <laughs> at least <laughs> before mass. Uh, but maybe we genuflect, we make the sign of the cross. We simply look at our Lord. But also, finally, one thing that I am certain the Lord is calling us to recover is keeping holy the Sabbath, Sundays. Keeping Sundays, setting that apart exclusively, exclusively for the Lord. The parents of St. Therese of Lisieux, both of whom are saints, Louis and Zélie Martin, they were very successful business people. Louis ran his own uh, jeweler shop where he made and repaired watches, and he was very good. And Zaley ran a very, very successful lace-making shop. She, had, she made some of the best lace in the world, and it was highly demanding. She had lots of people working for her, and her husband actually quit his job so he could support it. Now, it was very demanding, and they had lots of kids, and, and they also practiced their faith. But they made one commitment. And it was that no matter what, even when the markets were open on Sundays, even when they had worked really hard through the week, they would not work on Sundays. They would not work on Sundays. And that was a huge sacrifice for them. Now, they were able to do that because they owned their own business. Lots of people aren't able to do that now, right? It's, if this is the one job I can get. If I say I'm not working on Sundays, uh, even though legally, you know, people should, should uh, you know, provide for some carve out for that, right? Uh, I might not have my job, so that's an exception, right? But the point is they set aside Sundays and they spent that time. They also chose not to do things that would cause other people to work, right? So we know the catechism teaches us this, and maybe it's been a long time since we've heard it, but uh, to, to avoid shopping if at all possible. Now, if you need to go to the pharmacy and get medicine, uh, that's okay, right? Um, to, to avoid doing things that will cause other people to, to work. And when we do that, once again, it's not this slavish thing. To the contrary, it's actually something that sets us free. Where we take Sunday and we set it aside to spend time, to spend an extra prayer, to spend in community with other people. And the great thing about this is even if we can't make it to Mass on Sunday, we still have the holy experience of God's love and we're still able to worship him. When I was helping out at Newman Center's, I told them about how when I was a seminarian, I, I decided I wouldn't do any homework on a Sunday. And, uh, well, and that, that was good. It was helpful. But then this, this, this guy told him, uh, this guy who went on to medical school, he, he sent me a text. And he said, Father, remember how you told me uh, you didn't do any homework on Sundays? He said, I've been doing that. It's been working really well. Uh, classes start in two weeks. So, <laughs> but when we set that time aside, when we give that to the Lord, he rewards us, maybe not in exactly the way that, he's, that we expect, but he rewards us. And we experience ourselves as being free, as being children of God. And we're able to truly honor, worship, and adore him. And that sets our lives in order. And that becomes the preview, the taste of the life to come that the Magi got a, a, a taste of and experience of, that Mary and Joseph had a taste of and experience of, and that is our life in heaven, where we will praise and adore and love our God forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Turning to our Heavenly Father, who provides for all of our needs, we offer these prayers and petitions. For the Church, may we continue to proclaim to the world that Jesus is its true light and way to salvation. We pray to the Lord. For our world leaders, may they lay aside their differences and focus on peace and justice for all people. We pray to the Lord. May we, like the Magi who offered gifts to Jesus, give him the gift of our service. We pray to the Lord. For those who suffer in mind, body, or soul, that they may know the love of Jesus through the tender care of others. We pray to the Lord. For a respect for life, may we defend and protect the weakest among us, especially the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for Barb Strunk, for whom this Mass is being offered, and all those who have died. May they experience the light of God's glory. We pray to the Lord. Now let us pause and offer from our hearts our own personal intentions. For these special needs, we pray to the Lord. We pray the prayer to St. Michael for the freedom and purification of the Catholic Church. St. Michael the Archangel. May God rebuke you and humbly pray. May thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, to cast into hell of Satan and all the evil spirits who are under the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We ask that we can be open to all the gifts you desire to give us, and we can worship you rightly. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered an eternal salvation be ours through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, Louis, his brother, Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. Or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. brightness of God illumined the holy city Jerusalem and the nations will walk by its light. Act of spiritual communion for those participating online. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire you in my soul. 
since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you.
let us pray. Renewed by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you, through Christ our Lord. The only announcement is just that uh, all of our kind of parish-focused groups that, you know, are, have to do with education, so obviously our faith formation, um, men's group, women's prayer group, uh, those kind of things uh, will actually begin um, meeting back in person this coming uh, week, not this week, but the next week. Uh, and so uh, if you're part of that, we're, we'll be back in person doing that, obviously maintaining social distance and and all those things we still you know can't necessarily eat or things like that but um, just looking forward to having a little bit more normalcy and we we'll also have altar servers back those good things so just pray that we can continue um, hopefully moving forward the Lord be with you Amen. bow down for the blessing may God who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith hope and charity Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended.